more challenging area of the act for many practitioners to understand uh, has to do with regulations. And first, let's start by identifying what regulations are. Um, an act uh, is a statute, a written law, that has been passed by a legislative body, in our case, the legislature of Ontario, uh, and an act specifies the letter of the law, what is uh, and is not permissible under that particular statute. Once an act is drafted, the ministry responsible for its enforcement generally creates some regulations that are the guidelines uh, that help uh, ensure that the act is implemented and works as it's intended to. In our case, under the Private Security and Investigative Services Act, we have a number of regulations that are important for you to understand, uh, and we will be speaking about some of those regulations uh, during this section. The first of the regulations that I want to deal with uh, is the Clean Criminal Code regulation, uh, and uh, in your section you've been asked to download and uh, hold uh, a copy of the uh, Clean Criminal Record regulation. It looks like this in the event that you're looking for it. Um, and uh, the Clean Criminal Record regulation uh, is a tremendously helpful regulation under the Act. It tells you uh, who is and who is not eligible for a license by virtue of uh, having a criminal record. Um, so the Act itself specifies, I'm sorry, the regulation specifies that there are 81 uh, criminal code offenses that the drafters of the Act have deemed serious enough uh, to warrant refusing an applicant a license. In point of fact, uh, one of the uh, re uh, regulations, one of the sections has been rescinded, so there are 80 criminal code provisions that will prevent you from obtaining a private security guard's license, uh, and of course there are also two uh, uh, offenses under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act that likewise will prevent you from qualifying for a security guard's license. If you look at the regulations, you'll note that it's divided into three general columns. The first is simply a section or a column number or an item number. The second specifies what section or provision within the criminal code the, uh, the matter deals with. And the third is a brief description of uh, what the regulation is. If you look through the, uh, the, the Clean Criminal Code regulation, you'll find that most of the offenses listed are serious offenses, serious enough, of course, to warrant uh, not uh, giving somebody, not granting somebody a, a security guard's license uh, if they should uh, apply for that uh, license. Um, so just review randomly some of the sections here you'll see number one or item number one forgery of or uttering a forged passport forging a passport would mean that you uh, actually take time to create a fake passport uh, uttering that passport means that you might try to go to the airport and use that passport in order to board a flight or uh, use it as identification. Uh, both of those are components of the offense and if you were convicted of such an offense you would be denied a license uh, right off the uh, bat. If we go on and uh, look randomly uh, at uh, some of the uh, items here, number four, using or possessing property for terrorist purposes, uh, number seven, instructing to carry out activity for terrorist group, uh, and so on and so forth. So I would like you to take a look at some of the various provisions on these two pages. Any Anyone who's been convicted of any one of these offenses is not eligible for a license unless, of course, the individual has applied for and received a pardon under the, uh, under the uh, uh, appropriate legislation. As soon as somebody has received a pardon, they're considered for the purposes of this act uh, and in general to no longer have a criminal record uh, and they would then be eligible to uh, hold a license in general. Just a point of general information under our pardon system, anybody who's been convicted of a summary conviction offense, which is a, it's considered to be a less serious criminal offense, will be able to apply for a pardon after three years from completion of sentence. Uh, and anybody convicted of an indictable offense, a more serious criminal offense, may be eligible for a pardon five years after completion of sentence. So you should know yourself whether you've been convicted of a criminal offense. If you have, you you have to identify what the offense and specific section number of the criminal code is. Uh, look on this regulation to determine whether or not uh, there should be 
or will be any effect on your licensing under the Act. Uh, be aware that there are other reasons for why the ministry uh, might uh, withhold or reject the license, but generally speaking, uh, this uh, is the most important regulation for you to be familiar with, particularly if there is something in your history or in your past uh, that uh, you've been convicted of. Also keep in mind that uh, anybody convicted of an offense uh, under the age of, while they were under the age of 18, uh, will not be considered to have a criminal offense as an adult. Uh, so we're talking here about offenses that you would have committed uh, or been convicted of past the age of 18.